UFO could do their own interviews and do their, um, you know, gather any evidence. You know, a, a fresh UFO report is a kind of like Andrew said, this is something really exciting. You, you have very small window to get some accurate, actual accurate data to, to kind of. Uh, to put together. And so um, on their way to meet with them, the family was actually caught and approached by uh, uh, either it's either Frank Pangalo or an actual or, or a representative of his uh, who were with Channel 7 News at the time. And um, they, they caught them at the town of Budina, 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 Budina. <laughs> um, and the Channel 7, apparently, um, they offered, went ahead and offered the family $5,000, like, right then and there, for an exclusive interview uh, that would appear at on the program uh, at the time, which was called Hinch at 7, which was a popular evening news program. Um, you know, this, this is literally, like, hours after they had this, they had seen this, right? So, like, like they, they wanted the, the exclusive story so they could put it on the news, like, that night, Um and so, but the terms, uh, which would be agreed to, they would pay them $5,000 and this $5,000 would include, um, a term that involved that no other media, uh, outlet would have access to the family or their car. So everything was going to be kept off, you know, nobody could, everything was off limits to anyone else. Uh, if they took, if they went ahead and took this money and five gram doesn't seem like a lot of money, in my opinion, for (laughs) For exclusivity. But honestly though, for like, I I was like, nowadays you would not get $5,000 at all. (laughs) <laughs> right for for this for this but there's for this no story. exclusive you'd be lucky to get fucking yeah. a couple likes on facebook with that stuff yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> right so it's, it's like to me i was like by by that standard i was like yes but i was like at the same time i get it because you're like we want this on channel seven right this this you know you're gonna get a pinch of hinch uh on seven and this is you're gonna see this right that's and nowhere else right this is the exclusive so i can understand from that perspective of like these you know channels because like fuck you turn on the news now it's all the same shit it doesn't matter if you just like the host right who which host but this is like you have these fucking compelling stories that they have the exclusive no one else talks about it and they're not allowed to talk about it. so i can see that and five thousand dollars it's funny you said that you didn't think that was a lot i was like fuck i i would have jumped at that Oh, for two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, uh, yeah, you probably should have been a little bit more patient and waited because Pangalo later reported that another news outlet uh, had sent a representative that was right behind him for the Mike Willisy show, who's a famous uh, news. Uh, uh, he's a, a he's a hack <laughs> news anchor. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and they w- they said they would have paid twenty thousand dollars for the story. So if the family would have just waited like a couple more hours and met with that representative, oh. they they could have they could have gotten. It's easy to say that after though. Yeah, yeah. Right, they they like, ah, 20, gave it twenty. And I, gar- I guarantee you, that's the that's the it was out of spite, right? Oh, what you signed a thing? Well, we are gonna we are gonna. Offer no, no, no. Grand. That's what Pangalo said though. That's Pangalo, the guy who offered them the five thousand dollars. He's reported that yeah. he said that they were gonna be. I mean, he wouldn't be mad about it. He'd be like, ha. Ah. Well, yeah, that's the other thing too is he's probably bragging about it being like oh we got such a good deal we got trying to yeah, justify exactly. it to his producers be like well that's listen somebody else too. would have paid 20 for this i got it for five all right so uh a mere 36 hours after this event had happened uh the whole family was interviewed on the evening news and the ufo research uh australia kind of got put out now they 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 continued and tried to pursue the Knowles family to to get like a sit down interview um and they went as far as trying to actually uh you know uh, appro- like to get with the family members and and get the the story of their experience and conducting interviews in between um them being inter- like having sit down interviews with the channel 7 news studios in adelaide now um because of the time frame uh, that the U because of the time frame that they had, like the families were in and out with these interviews, like all day, uh, apparently. And it was really exhausting experience, you know, having to recount this traumatic experience over and over and over again, the UFO investigators, unfortunately, were unable to get actual sit down interviews. It was pretty much them just talking to each of the family members, like in between them going in and out of like interview rooms at the channel seven studios. Now, 
and then the, and then afterwards when when the ufo research australia approached the family you know formally like can we just have like a, a some of your time to do a sit down interview the family actually declined the interview with the ufo investigators um because they pretty much said you know we're, we're exhausted like we don't want to talk about it anymore we're done um, and then they just they left uh for and you know did, uh, the some of the reports say that it's just like an undisclosed location, but they probably just didn't tell anyone like where they were going. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> but this, this undisclosed location was actually uh, a family friend's home in Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. What did I say? Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. Melbourne. Um, well, and the, where the family was actually contacted by another news outlet, you know, everybody's favorite, you know, newspaper rag, the sun at the time. <laughs> Um, and this was, they were contacted by one Suzanne McDonnell, uh, who was reporting for the Melbourne Sun at the time. And uh, she actually requested, you know, I guess Sean was the one, the 21 year old who had been driving, uh, was the one to answer the phone and, and, and answer for the family uh, on this request for a sit down interview. But he said that, the, sure, that he would be happy to do that uh, on the condition of being paid $5,000 for his story. Stay right. Stay right. Well, to be honest, I'm like, this, this, that part of the story, I'm like, this is a fucking 21 year old who, could you imagine a 21 year old, like 21 year old, someone's just like, here's five grand. You're just like, holy shit. Like even split with your family, like four, like, yeah, like, mom's pulling shit, the strings. Bucks, mom's right? pulling the strings. But then, but then you're like, you get another story. You're like, yeah, I'll do it for five thousand dollars again. That's what they paid me last time to do it. Like, this seems like a twenty-one year old's response to be like, yeah, right, oh, five grand. Well, yeah, but if they're like, if he's like, yeah, I'll do it for five, they say no, and be like, okay, I'll take fucking twelve bucks. So whatever, <laughs> whatever I mean, you know, like, well, doesn't matter. You got, you got. Some well, extra he probably fucking... he probably thought because of how how quick people were kind of pursuing the story that this was going to be a regular getting paid so i could see him being like like hardball like yeah oh, five grand no then no i'm not doing it thinking oh. that another call was coming yeah and and the story appeared in a number of uh newspapers and a number of uh, news programs and stuff like that it actually kind of it got out and it was reported it kind of flew all over the place within the next couple days like you know family reports being attacked by ufo headlines like makes for good you know, call them headlines or whatever. Yeah. Um, they, you know, the son declined to pay them $5,000. They declined the interview. They said, no, well, no, then. <laughs> um, and so you might think that, okay, uh, maybe this family, it's just them, apparently, at, at the beginning. You're like, it's just them, as we told you. Like, it's, you know, maybe that other that other car that they almost swerved into that, was, that had been pull, pulling a caravan down the opposite lane, uh, somebody would be able to find them nobody's been able to find them nobody knows who they are but apparently there was a truck driver who is later identified as graham henley who was driving along that same stretch of road um and they estimated like the distance like between him uh and the the Knowles family is probably he was about 15 uh 10 to 15 kilometers ahead of them and he actually reported when when people tried to you know, it sussed out like exactly what was going on. Cause I think he, he actually was with them. Like he met with the family or he kind of pulled into the same roadhouse as the family, like just a little bit before they did and saw them yeah. being distraught about what they had seen. Um, you know, and he managed they, some reporters managed to, to track him down as well. And he said that actually he described seeing a glowing object similar or you know they a glowing object in the way in the direction of where the um Knowles family had been behind him you saw some kind of strange unidentifiable yeah and i can give you the rest of the story for another five grand were <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they charging 2500 <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it, this is a case of, uh, I, you're not really sure. Like you have an entire family in the car, uh, it, something happens, uh, they, they see some type of light. Now you have things that could possibly like your first go-tos as a skeptic, you're going to be like, well, you know, maybe it was, uh, you know, it was a light, like maybe it was just like a car headlight coming in an opposite direction. And then you could add another car, like, you know, just pulled up behind them and they started going, um, and they, they, you know, you're tired. It's 13 hours. They've been driving constantly on the road early. I, and I would hours. 
and I would buy into all those as easily explanations for the situation if there wasn't already a fucking light possible UFO thing plaguing this fucking area for like the last hundred years. Like this. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.